and welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston and I'm your host. You are listening to my book, Stairway to Heaven's Door. This book is copyrighted 2023 and all rights are reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced without permission. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Now here's the book. Step 1 Opening Your Heart Step-by-step Revelation 3 verse 20 After each section there will be a practice session where you will learn how to encounter Jesus. Just so you know I'm using Revelation 3 verse 20 as my step-by-step guide in helping you to follow the path Jesus took me. First, he taught me that he really is knocking at my heart's door. It takes some time to understand this and when you finally believe he is there then it will help you to open your heart. Let me remind you what Revelation 3 verse 20 says. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. In this scripture we first hear his voice. I believe most of us can do this well but I do talk about it in the next section. Assuming you can already hear his voice, we will work on the next step. That is opening our heart to Jesus. This is one of the most important steps and it is necessary to invite Jesus to come inside. Another important part of this is making a good place to commune with Jesus. Making a place for Jesus, here are some simple steps in making a good place to commune with the Lord. First it should be quiet and away from all distractions. You should be comfortable where you are sitting. You should turn off all devices, but the one you need for soft music playing. You can find a variety of instrumental music in all your favorite worship songs. I would pick something slow and soft as to not distract you. It would be preferable if you can find something that plays for 5 minutes. That is the time allotted for this training exercise. To keep you from being distracted or interrupted I would suggest you mute all notifications. To begin with you should know that all these training steps are on YouTube if you prefer to listen to them while having your encounter. Let's get started. Eyes of our heart. When my encounters began Jesus spent a lot of time teaching me how to encounter him. I found I had a lot of limited ideas about what it means to experience him in the spirit. The truth was I had been seeing and hearing in the spirit for many years. But I was not using my heart so much as my head. I believe that was what made all the difference. As I've already said I had no idea we had eyes in our heart. I thought that was a metaphor. And when I heard of people meeting with Jesus in the spirit, I thought that it was in a way that they could see and hear like I had been doing all these years. Over time I have come to realize that there are many different ways to connect with Jesus in the Spirit. Like with the three ways we saw the people of Jesus' day heard God the Father speaking to him. I now understand that we can move through many layers in the Spirit realm. As we go deeper with Jesus and connect with his heart more firmly our sight and hearing become increasingly clearer and more direct. Western thinkers and the suspension of disbelief. Let me talk a minute about the practical side of all this to help you make the shift from your head to your heart. When you have strong emotions in your heart you feel them. For you they are real and you typically don't question the feelings as much as what you are thinking or believing that ignite those feelings. We are always guarding our hearts by deciding on what we will believe. And yet there are times that we set aside reality to enjoy a good movie or a captivating book. We do this because we know the benefits and pleasure in taking time to be caught up in something fun even if it isn't real. The term for setting aside reality is called the suspension of disbelief. Children do this naturally because their critical thinking skills have not been fully developed. They don't mind looking silly and when they enter into a pretend playtime, they can fully embrace the imagined reality because their hearts are wide open to anything. I experienced the suspension of disbelief in connection with encountering Jesus during my Sozo and Theophostics prayer times. For me this wasn't the ignoring of reality as much as it was accepting of his reality. I think that is what faith is. 
The setting aside of our need to have proof all the time and just believing in what he has told us. When I entered into those times of prayer expecting to see Jesus he showed up. It was amazing and I believed in him even more. And just so you know by using these techniques, I was healed of some very intense traumatic memories. But to enter into these situations I had to set aside my need to have everything make sense in my head. I trusted my counselor and I trusted Jesus. My heart was open to what he wanted to do. Because of this I was able to embrace the encounter like a small child. I believe this is why Jesus says that only those who come like a child will see the kingdom of heaven. Children easily set aside their need of proof and explanations when they play. I actually saw how to set aside my disbelief by watching children praying for the sick. They do not stop and analyze if something will work or not. They hear from God and then run with the suggestion. Being childlike we will set aside our need to analyze everything in our heads and simply enjoy the moment in our hearts. Here are a few tips that I discovered along the way. If you do see Jesus sitting with you then acknowledge him there. I know that sounds strange, but these encounters are not thundery visions where Jesus shows up in his glory. Just the opposite. These are very sweet and gentle encounters where Jesus shows up in a way that we can relate to. Because Jesus comes very softly it is easy to ignore him or think you're just imagining him with you. This is all part of the transition from head to heart. I also find it helps to look at where he is standing or sitting and acknowledge him there. When I first started meeting with Jesus face to face I wouldn't share my thoughts or feelings thinking he was able to know all that. But this is about developing a true relationship with him. That means we will need to be real and work to connect and communicate with him. When I suggest you share your feelings I'm talking about personal feelings. Like how you love him or how he can help you draw closer to him. I would encourage you to leave your prayer needs out of these face to face encounters. I have found that whenever I start asking Jesus for prayer needs, my mind kicks in again and I lose my heart to heart, spirit to spirit connection. I think it is best to talk about prayer needs another time. Another thing I have found is Jesus likes it when we ask for help specifically. If I'm having trouble focusing, I ask for help. Or if he seems a million miles away, I ask him to help me feel him closer. Whatever you need him to help with ask. You will see an instant response. It reminds me of the guy Jesus heals of blindness. After the first prayer he saw people like trees, but then Jesus prayed again and he was healed. This is all a process and we just need to keep responding to what Jesus is doing. Talk to him and open up about what is happening. If you feel silly then tell him. Ask him to help you maintain a childlike attitude. He will do it all for us, we just have to keep asking and believing. As you practice these encounters with Jesus it is best to find a place that is quiet and will be without interruptions. Again I would advise you to turn off your devices if possible. I have found that after I go through the work of setting aside my critical thinking and enter into a childlike place it can be very disappointing to be interrupted. With your devices off there will be nothing to break into your special times and bring you back to your earthly reality. Back when my encounters began Jesus came to me on earth and taught me how to open my heart. This is where I want to begin with you. I want you to picture your heart as a flower and choose to open it up to Jesus. I first saw my heart as a rose, now I'm seeing it as a sunflower. You choose whatever flower you like. Opening your heart like this is something you will want to keep doing every time you are with Jesus. You may think you are just imagining that you are opening your heart, but what you don't know is that symbols and metaphors are one of the languages of heaven, which means Jesus actually understands what you are saying to him. And he will come into your heart when you offer it up to him this way. I do this several times a day and more times than not I do feel him come in. But if you don't, Please don't worry about that. I didn't learn how to do any of this quickly because it is a process. You should keep in mind that Jesus is a gentleman and will not force his way into our hearts. 
That is why we have to invite him in every single time. Another thing you should be aware of is that as you picture your heart like a flower opening up to Jesus, you are transitioning from your head to your heart. In a way you are moving from your earthly reality to his heavenly one. Something else is that when I began having encounters and even to this day the best way to bring me into a better connection is through physical touch. That is why I often will feel Jesus take my hand or put his arm around me. If you sense this respond to him. This is all in the spirit which means I'm not actually feeling anything in my body. When Jesus reaches out to me, I always respond. If he takes my hand then I close my hand around his. I make a point to meet him halfway. Remember he is using my mustard seed of faith with his. It seems fair that if he makes a small connection that I can feel then I should return the gesture in some way. I find this makes things more real to me when I respond to the things Jesus does. When you're ready I want you to pray the prayer below. After you pray and go through the process of opening your heart like a flower you should remain quiet with Jesus. Just enjoy being with him and listen to him speaking to your heart. Five minutes is all the time you should take for this first practice. This is one of the boundaries Jesus showed me to use to take the pressure off and to keep you from wandering away. Like a child have no expectations other than knowing Jesus is big enough to train you to encounter him. You should do this encounter session daily until you are opening your heart easily. It also is a great way to get back to having encounters if you stop being able to connect with Jesus. Here is the prayer I'd like you to pray. Dear Jesus, I sense you here with me. I know from scripture that you are knocking at my heart's door. I want to open my heart door to you. Please help me to overcome anything that stands in the way of me doing that. I offer my tiny mustard seed of faith to you. Jesus, thank you for being right here with me. I ask that you help me be childlike by accepting that you are here and can lead me into knowing you better. More about opening your heart to Jesus. I'm going to talk you through opening your heart to Jesus as a flower. Like in Revelation 3 verse 20 I want you to open your heart's door to commune with him through your heart connection. I will guide you along in this and when I'm done you should sit with Jesus for 5 minutes. Allow him to lead you. Again, you should do this every day until it becomes easy and seamless. Always write in your journal what happens. You should turn on your music before you open your heart so you don't have to stop and do that after you connect with Jesus. Opening your heart like a flower. As you focus on Jesus think of the scripture that says, Be still and know I'm God. Quiet your heart as you picture Jesus as the sun above. Think of your heart as a flower in the morning. The sun is shining down upon you. You can feel Jesus' loving warmth beckoning you to open your heart. You can feel the sweetness of his love and it is dear and precious. It makes you eager for more. Your flower petals slowly begin to open. You tell Jesus that you want him to have access to every part of your heart. Your heart opens wide and you enjoy Jesus. At this point let Jesus lead during the five minutes. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This book, Stairway to Heaven's Door Book One, is part of a series. The first book was called Heaven's Door, and the book after this one is Stairway to Heaven's Door Book Two. And all of these books are on Amazon, so you can purchase them. And they, most of them are on YouTube, so you can listen. All of these books have been written to help you learn how to encounter Jesus. I want to thank you again for listening. Have a great day. Bye now.